Today on Fox Can Fix It, we're going to talk a little bit about tire sizes, uh, what the numbers mean, and the differences between the two. So what we have here is a light truck tire. It is an older style numbering system where they use inches instead of metric. This is your tire size here, uh, load and speed rating here. There's also a load range written on it. Um, but this is a non-metric style sizing. Most of your pasture car tires, uh, SUV, truck tires, most of them are going to be in metric, and we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, this is older style that you'll most likely see for uh, MT, which is max traction or mud terrain uh, tires that you'll get on off-road trucks. Most of them are going to be uh, 15, 16, 17-inch rims. You get above that, then you start getting back into metric sizing. First number, 31. 31 is the diameter of the tire from tread to tread, top to bottom, side to side, as long as you're going through the middle, diameter of it, 31 inches. 10.5, 10.5 refers to the width of it, not necessarily the width of the tread, the width of the entire tire. The tread might only be nine, nine and a half, but the actual width of the tire inflated, 10.5. R means radial, so it's a radial tire. If you see a D here, D is what bias ply tires say right here. Um, good way to remember that is D is directional um, and bias plies run in one direction. Uh, radial means that your ply is going directly across this way. Bias plies, they are crosshatched. You'll have one running this way and another one running this way across the tire. LT, uh, light truck. Uh, you could also see P here for passenger. If you see ST, that is service trailer, that is not a car or truck tire. That is specific for industrial, agricultural, or trailer use only. Um, so watch out for ST. A lot of times shopping online, you'll see cheap deals on tires and it, look out for the ST. Usually it's gonna be there. 109 is your load rating on the tire. Um, there's charts online. There's plenty of them that will show you what it is. Basically the higher the number, uh, the higher the load. Q is the speed rating. Speed rating, same thing. Uh, the farther down the alphabet you go towards Z, the higher the speed rating. Z being a high speed, A being a very low speed. Uh, load range C refers to um, the load rating of the tire, sort of like this number does. This, it's almost doubled up here. So 109 or C. C would be um, an old bias by tire would have multiple uh, layers for the sidewall to increase the load capability of it. Um, and C would be a six ply. Um, this means that the radial tire is as strong as the bias ply six ply tire. Uh, mostly it's referring to sidewall strength. Load rating um, is the overall strength of the tire how much weight the individual tire can hold at its normal inflation pressure. Um, so the higher that number, uh, the higher the load rating. Usually you're gonna see those between 1,000 and 2,500 pounds. Um, so the numbers are gonna be, uh, 109 is probably somewhere around 2,000, 1,800 to 2,000 pounds, but there's many charts online you can look it up. So again, this is in inches, 31 is diameter of the tire, 10 is the width of the tire, 15 is the rim, LT is light truck, speed and load ratings here, and that takes care of the non-metric size radial tires. Next, we're going to move on to the more standard metric numbers that you'll see on cars today. Hold on, let me change tires. Okay, got the tires switched around. This is a P-metric tire. Um, these measurements are metric measurements, at least the first number. Second number is a percentage. This, again, is inches. So metric is really only the first number. P here means P-metric, which means it is the new standard passenger car sizing arrangement. 235 refers to the width of the tire in millimeters, not in inches, not in centimeters, not in meters, not in anything but millimeters. 
if you want to convert this number to inches, divide this number by 25.4. Now it'll get you inches. Second number is a percentage of this. So 235 is the width. 75 means that your sidewall, this section, is 75% of the width of the tire. So if you convert this to inches, you can get height of the tire, convert that to inches, that's gonna be somewhere around probably nine and a half, nine, nine and a half, 75% of that. So let's just, for argument's sake, we'll say this is seven. So you would take, if you wanna find the height of the tire, we'll say nine and a half times 0.75, gets you to seven. So seven plus your rim size, 15, plus another seven for the other side, half of the sidewall down here. So 14 and 15 would be 29. So this would be an overall 29 inch tire. R still means radial. You could see a D here. Be careful, you will see that, especially on trailer tires, you'll see a D here instead of an R sometimes. Still bias fly, but you might have the metric numbering system. 15, still rim width in inches or rim diameter, not rim width. Rim width is separate. M plus S. M plus S is mud and snow, which means it's an all-season tire. Um, they used to make summer tires. Uh, maybe in high-performance tires, they probably still do. Uh, majority of the time, you're going to see all-season tires. A lot of them will have M plus S. Uh, if you see W, it's a winter tire. Um, AT, all-terrain, MT, mud terrain, or max traction, whichever you want to call that one. Um, sometimes these have load ratings written on them. This one does not have one that's got the speed and loading. This one does have max load, but not in the lettering numbering system. Max load on this is 2,100 pounds at max inflation pressure of 41 pounds. So this would probably be uh, a, almost a C-load range tire, probably right around the same as the last one we did. Um, it's going to be C-load 109, 110, uh, somewhere around there. So again, this is probably a light truck tire. It says P, but doesn't say LT. Probably for use in SUVs, larger cars, light trucks, uh, a little bit heavier. The higher the load rating, the thicker the sidewall, the less flex you're going to get. Uh, the thinner the tire and the lighter the load rating, the more flex you're going to get on the sidewall, which means it's, it'll be uh, a little less stable uh, around corners. And on the highway going over bumps, the thicker it is, the more stable it is. Um, also, the higher this number, the less stable it's going to be in corners. Just because you have this much room to flex where 75% of the width, if this is a low profile tire, like a 30, this number would be 35 or 40 it would be only be, say, that tall. Much less material to flex, much more stable in corners. That's why uh, road racing, that's why uh, like SCCA racing, things like that run really low profile tires is. You don't get the sidewall deflection, a lot more stable in corners, it'll go flatter. It's a lot more predictable what it's gonna do. Um, I think I've got a bias ply tire sitting around here somewhere. Let me find it and we'll put it up here and I'll show you what those numbers look like, hold on. Okay, turns out I did have an old bias ply trailer tire. Again, ST service trailer. You don't want this on passenger cars. ST is spe very specific for trailer industrial agricultural use. 175, so it's still the metric. This is the width, 175 millimeters. 80, this sidewall is 80% of this width. Very tall sidewall. D. D, directional bias ply, whichever you can remember it. I remember D being directional. It's not a regular radial tire. 13, rim size, much smaller rim. Um, and the way you can look at D as directional, especially on trailer tires, is these almost look like airplane tires. You have most of the tread pattern running here with long, unbroken channels. It looks more like it's a directional tire um, that would not really be used for steering, but would have really good traction running straight. That's how I help remember that. Um, okay, I was gonna ramble on for a couple more minutes and repeat myself, but I thought what people would probably like to know is how to change rim sizes without changing diameter of your tire. 
When you change the diameter of your tire, especially on newer cars, um, you change the speedometer. The speedometer is reading a wheel speed sensor. So as you get larger in diameter, your wheel speed sensor actually reads slower because your tire is larger in circumference, so it has less revolutions per mile. So larger diameter tire, if your speedometer says 45, you're probably doing closer to 40. Smaller tire, if your speedometer says 45, maybe you're doing 50. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to change your rim size and keep the diameter as close as possible to the same. So we'll go back to our 235, 75, 15 tire, which I have and I know the calculations for. So we'll look at that. So 235 is, again, the width of the tire in millimeters. Divide that by 25.4, which is how many millimeters there are in an inch. So we're converting this over two inches from millimeters. You can come up with 9.25. So the width of the tire, 9.25 inches. Then you take our second number, which is the sidewall percentage aspect ratio. So 9.25 times 0.75. This is 75% of this. And you get 6.93. So that means your sidewall from where it mounts to the rim to the tread is 6.93 inches. So you take 6.93 plus 6.93 because you have sidewall on either side of the tread. If you're looking at the tire, the rim is in the middle. You have tread on either side of it. So you have to account for both. 6.93 plus 6.93 plus your rim, and you get an overall diameter of 28.86 inches. So that's 15 inch rim. Say you wanna to go to a 17 inch rim. Probably pretty common, 18 would be common. Uh, maybe even up to 20, but we're gonna deal with 17 today. These calculations will work. Um, for any of these, the main number you're gonna change is this middle one, trying to keep the diameter the same. You want your width staying the same. You only want to change the rim size. This is the number that you have to change. So again, 235 millimeters divided by 25.4, which converts it to inches, 9.25. That did not change. Those are the same. So you have a larger rim size, so you have to go with a smaller percentage to keep the height the same. So we're going to 65. So 9.25 times 0 0.65, 6.01, or 6 even. We'll go with 6.01, it's fine. So 6.01, which is sidewall from, again, from rim to tread, times two, so six plus six, plus 17 is 29.02. Less than a quarter of an inch, your speedometer's not gonna care, your ABS is not gonna care. Um, that'll totally work, you'll be fine. So, that is simply changing this. The width of your tire remained the same, your rim got bigger, your sidewall got less. That's how you keep it so your ABS light does not come on, which means your ABS will work. When your ABS light's on, your ABS is not working. Your speedometer will read accurately. So you can roll down the road, and if you're doing 65, you're really doing 65. Um, and you get nice bigger rims with probably a better tire size today. 15's a little bit old. Uh, most stuff today is 16, 17, 18, maybe up to 20 from the factory. Um, but when you get that high, usually the rim is also wider, so this number is going to be higher, 245, 255, 265, uh, maybe up into the 300s if you get wider things like uh, Corvette tires, performance car tires. But basic formula remains the same. First number you convert to inches, multiply it by... 0.75, which is the percentage number on the second, this number times two or plus, and then your rim, and you'll get the overall diameter. Once you know your original diameter, you can monkey with your rim size and your sidewall diameter, and make sure you come out as close as possible to your original size. Um, very important, especially in the aftermarket when you're wanting to change your, your car's look. Uh, rims and tires are one of the biggest things that people change. Um, and you want your car to still perform the same. So this is how you can do that. Get some nice looking rims and uh, keep everything working correctly. That's all I have for today. Uh, any questions, let me know. If I think of anything else with tires, I'll let you know. See you next time.